what a difference a year makes. Today, exactly 12 months after launch, ESA's HERA mission for planetary defense is cruising safely through deep space. The car-sized spacecraft is currently far from Earth. Well, in ESA, we've had an absolutely amazing time operating HERA and looking after it um, over the past year. Um, right now, on its birthday, it's really far from us. It's on the other side of the sun, half a billion kilometers away from Earth, but we are still in touch and it has been behaving really well so far. Just a year earlier, things looked very different at Cape Canaveral when the team wasn't sure if HERA was going to lift off at all. 48 hours before launch, we still had no approval for launch because the launcher was grounded because of an anomaly a few flights before. And we were finishing the thermal blankets, we were finishing uploading the software and fixing still some software just a few hours until launch. So it was totally crazy. And at the same time, news were telling us that uh, a hurricane, Milton, was e heading exactly in our way. This was the most intense Atlantic hurricane ever recorded over the Gulf of Mexico, headed straight for Cape Canaveral. Locals boarded up windows and stockpiled sandbags. So on launch day, we woke up at five. At six o'clock, we were on the base and it was just pouring rain. So the first briefing, we had only 15% probability or chance of launching. Uh, but nevertheless, we agreed to go on the launch pad because the hurricane was coming and that was our last chance. Otherwise, we would have had to put the launcher back into the hangar. Delaying wasn't an option. Hera needed to line up with Mars for a vital gravity assist to speed its journey to the Didymos binary asteroid system. Any slip now would have delayed the mission by a matter of years. This would be too late for Hera's planetary defense goal, checking exactly what happened after NASA's DART spacecraft crashed into the smaller asteroid back in 2022. Finally, there was a miracle half an hour before launch. A storm was coming far away enough for us to launch and that at that moment, the auto sequence started and we launched. So that was a lot of joy, a lot of, uh, lot of tears, a lot of excitement. And finally, uh, literally as Milton was approaching, the satellite was in space and we were heading towards Didymos. The action shifted to ESOC, where ESA's operations team took control. They'd been holding their breath to see if Hera would make its tour. Acquisition of signal from space confirmed. They had a mission. As Hera sped away, teams across the world powered up the spacecraft instruments, capturing images of Earth and the Moon. In the process, the team performed the very first test of the self-driving technology that Hera will rely on around the asteroids, performing centroid tracking of these two bodies. The next mission milestone came in the spring of 2025, as Hera came as close as 5,700 kilometers away from Mars, the planet's gravity shifting the spacecraft trajectory towards its final destination. In March this year, Hera flew by Mars, and also one of its moons, uh, Deimos, we could observe during this flyby. It was a very fast flyby, so Hera flew by within 30 minutes of the system, and uh, in this period, we took the chance and the challenge to take a lot of images of Mars and its moons for a scientific purpose. So our cameras were active and were imaging at a high frequency as it will be during the asteroid system, but also from a navigational perspective. We used one of our so-called feature tracking modes where Hera is seeing features on the surface of Mars and analyzing that and tracking them over time through which it can keep on pointing its cameras on the Mars surface. And this is one of these the key features we will be using when we are very close to the asteroid system. Moving at nine kilometers per second relative to Mars, Hera was soon on its own again, gradually gaining on Didymos. Back on Earth, the mission team are still keeping busy, checking in regularly on Hera and preparing new software for upload as the cruise phase continues. This is the first interplanetary mission we have the chance to work on. And what a first mission it is. And we get to do this alongside very experienced people that worked on impactful and ambitious missions like Rosetta. So this was an absolute privilege so far. In May, Hera captured its very first asteroid image, 
of asteroid Otero, visible as a bright dot from 3 million kilometers away, confirming the sensitivity of Hera's asteroid framing camera. Meanwhile, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, a mission partner, confirmed that their own station antenna can communicate with Hera in deep space. Back in Europe, the mission operations infrastructure for HERA's two CubeSats is being set up. HERA is carrying uh, two CubeSats. These are nano satellites, if you want. They're the, the size of a, of a shoebox. They will complement uh, the, the science acquired by HERA because basically they, they're allowed to take more risks. They'll, be, they'll go closer to the binary system. So all the data exchanges, so instru instructions to the CubeSats, but telemetry back from the CubeSats flows through HERA, then to ESOC here in, in Darmstadt. And then we transmit all this to the uh, what we call the CMOC, which is the CubeSats Mission Operation Center. Right now, the CubeSat Mission Operation Center is going through its design review yeah, and we're following this closely. HERA is scheduled to reach the binary asteroids in autumn 2026 and may even catch its first glimpse of the pair next summer. At the same time, we're preparing for two new missions. One is uh, Comet Interceptor, uh, which will basically be launched, go to a parking orbit and wait for a pristine uh, uh, comet to show up and then we'll go and visit this comet. Uh, Comet Interceptor is reusing a lot of uh, software from, from HERA, for example, and all the ground processes we are using for HERA we will adapt for Comet Interceptor. And the next mission is RAMSES. So this is uh, basically a carbon copy of HERA. We have one year less to, to uh, prepare, build uh, RAMSES before launch from 2028. And the idea is to be with uh, asteroid Apophis, which will fly by Earth on the Friday, the 13th of April 2029, at a distance below the geostationary ring. Yeah? So there's no risk of collision with the Earth, but um, the, the asteroid will be so close that here in Europe, it's around 2100 in, in, in the evening, we'll be able to see it with the naked eye. The mission team remained busy. Next, Hera is headed to the corners of Apelion, its furthest distance from the Sun. At around the same time, ESA's Council of Ministers will be making the go-no-go no go decision for Hera's follow-on Ramses mission, ESA's next asteroid adventure.